sold my soul to the devil. Katy Perry, who is one of the greatest pop artists of all time, who has more Twitter followers than anyone else in the world, with nearly 66 million, has drawn millions of unsuspecting young fans into her dark web with her seemingly fun-loving, innocent bubblegum persona. But as with so many other leading artists in the satanically dominated music industry, there is far more to Katy Perry than meets the eye, because under her bright persona lies great darkness. They're evangelical, you know, and my dad has got a little Pentecostal in him because he's from Memphis, so uh, they're a, a smorgasbord of, of Christianity. So it's impossible, I'm guessing, to live one's life without still having some of this in your heart. Of course, you, you have the roots, exactly, but sometimes, right. you know, the uh, details change. Details change. And just how much have the details changed? Katy Perry was brought up praising God and singing in church, even releasing a gospel album under her father's last name as Katie Hudson. However, Katy tells us that as a 15-year-old, she wanted to be the next big Christian pop artist like Amy Grant. But her rise to stardom never really got off the ground. It is at this time that Katie turned her back on her professed faith in God and swears that she sold her soul to the devil in her quest to become a world famous pop star. I released a gospel record when I was 15 um, because I grew up in uh, you know, a household where all I ever did was listen to gospel music and my parents are both traveling ministers and so I kind of sang about you know what was going on in my life at 15 and that's how I got introduced to the music industry. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. Sold my soul to the devil. Katie's admission to selling her soul is further substantiated in her song Rock God. Perry not only wrote the song Rock God, which is also sung by Selena Gomez, but the song appears to be biographical of her betrayal of her creator and her selling her soul to the god of rock and roll, who she has already identified as the devil. Perry sings about rejecting the preacher's call to walk the straight and narrow path that Jesus Christ said leads to eternal life and selling her soul to the rock god who possesses her with his music. So what in the world is Katie singing about? I sold my soul to the devil. God commands us in his word to expose the evil works of darkness that Satan is using to lead the world astray. In Perry's song, Rock God, Katie rejects the counsel of the preacher, who she also appears to refer to as her father, and states emphatically that she is selling her soul. In 2013, Perry's father, Keith, who is an ordained minister, asked for prayer for his daughter's soul. Katie's father broke down in tears over her choice to serve Satan. He acknowledged, as she did earlier, that she is doing Satan's work, exclaiming, quote, My girl Katy Perry is a devil child, end quote. Her father Keith further acknowledged, quote, I was at a concert of Katie's where there were 20,000. I was watching this generation and they were going at it. It was almost like church, Keith said. I stood there and wept and kept on weeping and weeping. They're loving and worshiping the wrong thing, end quote. Near the end of the song Rock God, Katie reiterates her decision to reject Jesus' call to salvation and underscores her decision to follow the Rock God, declaring she is not turning back. Jesus Christ warned that selling one's soul for temporal earthly riches or fleeting fame and fortune is a bad deal in light of eternity. Jesus Christ warned, quote, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? End quote. Katie's willful surrender of her soul to satanic powers allows Satan to use her as a puppet to influence the unsuspecting masses in a way that turns them away from God and toward immorality and destruction. Even though Perry is an adult woman who is over 30 years old, she is targeting millions of impressionable young teenagers and dragging them down to hell with her. 
On her album Teenage Dream, Perry sings about sexual perversion by including everything from illicit sex with boys to having sex with an alien. She even goes so far as to suggest bestiality by showing animals having sex in her video for her song E.T. and then showing herself more partially into an animal after kissing a man. While many believe that Perry was here revealing her true colors, the fact is, is that she has been unveiling the darkness layer by layer for some time now. In her song E.T., she sings about having sexual relations with a demonic entity, which she claims could actually be the devil himself. The video for the song drudges up images of Eve falling for Satan, who opens her eyes to good and evil. This is significant because of Satanist Aleister Crowley's emphasis on sex magic for the religion of Antichrist and how it is all about involving ETs or really demons into sexual encounters. Perry sings about Satan or the one that she says could be the devil, that he is so hypnotizing and about how he is from another dimension. Perry, who is well aware of satanic imagery, depicts Satan as an extraterrestrial demonic entity falling from the heavens. Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 that he beheld Satan like lightning falling from heaven. After Katy Perry admitted selling her soul to Satan to be a pop star, she not only ended up with the most Twitter followers in the world, but she ended up getting the biggest gig on earth as she performed at the 2015 Super Bowl and sang her song, I Kissed a Girl, promoting lesbian sexual experimentation to millions of impressionable teeny boppers. In fact, her song, I Kissed a Girl, was Katy Perry's first big influential hit after surrendering her soul to Satan. In this song, she plants thoughts and impressionable minds of the youth who are already living in an increasingly liberal society without moral guidance, confusing them in regard to sexual orientation and glorifying experimentation with lesbian behavior with a complete stranger. Since the song I Kissed a Girl came out, Katy Perry has gone around locking lips with nearly every woman imaginable, including the incredibly perverse Miley Cyrus. After singing her song I Kissed a Girl, Katy Perry also featured the controversial lesbian rapper Missy Elliott, who sang one of her most perverse songs, Work It, which promotes lyrics like, quote, if you got a big blank, let me search it, go downtown and eat it like a vulture, end quote. <laughs> The tragedy is that Satan is using Katy Perry to target very young children with her act by using primary colors in her outfit and a nursery themed set designed to draw small children into her web. And as we've seen, Perry has admitted that her success is a result of selling her soul to the devil. When Katy Perry was asked what Justin Bieber could do after really messing up his life, she hypocritically advised him that he should read the Bible. Justin Bieber is going f***ed up. Any advice for him? Yes. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Evidently, Katie's diminishing of traditional and biblical marriage is in conflict with her own advice, as God reveals in the biblical book of Romans, quote, Therefore God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. 
Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error." End quote. God loves and cares deeply for all who are caught up in sexual immorality, whether it's heterosexual sin or homosexuality, and calls everyone to turn from sin to Christ for salvation. At the 2014 Grammys, like a snake shedding its skin, Katy Perry shed her bright, colorful bubblegum image that she spent years so carefully crafting to publicly reveal the dark, witchy woman she has been successfully hiding for years. After her diabolical performance of her song Dark Horse, E! Online tweeted, quote, um, did we just witness actual witchcraft during Katy Perry's Grammy performance?" End quote. Before Katy Perry's witchy Dark Horse performance, she revealed to Ryan Seacrest of E! Entertainment Television that her upcoming performance would be witchy and that it was somewhat inspired by Fleetwood Mac's Stevie Nicks, who often dressed like a witch on stage and whom Rolling Stone called the blonde priestess of the occult. Well, what did you and Stevie uh, talk about? Actually, my performance is kind of inspired by her. What can you tell us about the performance tonight? Um, let's just say uh, one of my favorite lines, witch, witch is witch. It's very spooky. Most of Stevie Nicks' music is copyrighted under the name Welsh Witch Music. Perry wasn't kidding when she said it would be very dark. As she began her performance as a witch, singing within a crystal ball, she soon emerged from the crystal ball, dancing with grotesque demons adorned with devil horns. Perry even had a Knights Templar cross emblazoned across her torso. Perry next turned to pole dancing on a wooden witch's broom. She consummated her ode to Satan by standing amidst a raging fire conjuring up images of the damned as she appeared to be celebrating a witch's Sabbath. Tragically, Perry's music is being used by Satan to indoctrinate her young impressionable fans into occultism, Gnosticism, witchcraft, sexual perversion, and Satanism. Many of those who are associated with witchcraft seek to gain recruits by claiming that it is innocent and has nothing to do with the satanic forces of darkness. However, nothing can be further from the truth. Satan often dresses up occultism and witchcraft in a veil of light in his effort to deceive those who would otherwise know not to deal with the devil. The reality is that whether one claims to be engaged in either quote-unquote white or black magic, the source of all occult power according to God himself is Satan and the demonic realm. Satan's end time game is always the same, deception and destruction. Jesus called Satan the father of lies. God's word warns us, quote, And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds, end quote. Even the now deceased Satanist leader Anton LaVey, who founded the Church of Satan and wrote the Satanic Bible, admitted in his Satanic Bible that there's no real difference between white pagan magic and black magic, stating, quote, White magic is supposedly utilized only for good or unselfish purposes, and black magic, we are told, is used for only selfish or evil reasons. Satanism draws no such dividing line. There is no difference between white and black magic except in the smug hypocrisy, guilt-ridden righteousness, and self-deceit of the white magician himself." End quote. Even Gerald Gardner, who started the most popular branch of witchcraft today, Wicca, under the tutelage of Satanist Aleister Crowley, and who was a member of Crowley's OTO, used a friendlier version of Crowley's satanic maxim, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, for the Wiccan read, simply adding to the first part of the maxim, and harm ye none. Even Doreen Valiente, who was Gardner's first Wiccan high priestess and has had more influence on Wicca than any other woman, admitted, quote, The distinction between black and white magic has no validity, end quote. This is why God himself condemns both Satanism and witchcraft throughout his word, the Bible, because it's a counterfeit and diabolical power used by Satan to dupe and destroy the masses. Incredibly, Katy Perry's Dark Horse videos already have over 1 billion plays on YouTube. While in Katy Perry's Grammy version of the Dark Horse song, she glorified Western witchcraft, in her video version, she glorified Eastern mysticism and Egyptian magic. In the song, Perry sings about coming at you like a dark horse with magic to put a spell on you. The dark horse is meant to be symbolic, of course. The dark horse in the book of Revelation, chapter 6, symbolizes death. And Katy Perry, in her video Dark Horse, depicts herself as using black magic or putting death spells on those who seek her love. Perry even depicts herself as being held in the arms of the demon god Horus while holding a slithering serpent, yet another biblical symbol for Satan. God's word prophesies that in the last days before Christ's return, that there would be a resurgence of